Ladies and gentlemen, the first public hearing of the school board of Palm Beach County regarding the 2020-2021 tentative budget is called to order. Final hearing to, to adopt the budget will be held on September 9th, 2020 at 5.05 p.m. The purpose of these hearings is to listen to the public regarding the superintendent's proposed millage rates and tentative budget. The board's agenda for this meeting includes the proposed millage levies, agenda item B1, and the tentative budget for fiscal year 2021. Agenda item B2, the school board may and will amend the tentative budget prior to the final public hearing in September. Would the board clerk please call the roll? District one, Barbara McQuinn. Here. District two, Chuck Shaw. Here. Here. District, District three, Karen Brill. Here. District four, Erica Whitfield. Here. District five, Frank Barbieri. Here. District six, Marsha Andrews. Here. District seven, Deborah Robinson. Here. We have, uh, of course, the superintendent is also with us this evening, Dr. Fenoy, uh, Ms. Michael, our inspector general, and our general counsel, Julie Enrico. Um, at this point, Dr. Fenoy, before we move forward, we have two, or we have two uh, members of the public that would like to speak to us. Their recorded messages with the IT department, please play those two messages at this time. Hello, my name is Terry Jones. My comment is about the proposed tax increase. I am not in favor of any tax increase at this time. Present conditions understood. A tax increase, in my opinion, is a slap in the face. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Good evening, board, board members, superintendent. My name is Justin Katz. I'm calling in to lead public comment during the budget hearing today and specifically on item B2, the resolution adopting the tentative budget. Um, I just wanted to praise the school district superintendent, staff and the school board for maintaining the salary allocation that you had proposed and discussed uh, in prior meetings on the budget. It's critical, especially at this time for teachers to maintain that allocation because with the increase in minimum teacher salary for new and newer teachers from the state and the law that was passed and signed by the governor recently, uh, that means that almost only local funds can be used for raises for veteran teachers who have been teaching for 10, 20 or 30 years who were almost entirely excluded from the law that was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor. Uh, we appreciate your dedication to your employees and the teachers of the school district. We're working hard right now to make sure that distance learning and this entire school year go off as smoothly as possible for our students as well as you, our employer, because their teachers are professionals, they're dedicated. And again, I just wanted to thank you for maintaining the salary allocation this year and CTA looks forward to working with your staff to negotiate fair raises for veteran teachers who are almost exclusively left out of the increase in teacher pay by the legislature and the governor. So thank you again and have a great rest of your night. Mr. Superintendent, go ahead. Yes, sir. Before you are two agenda items that I am recommending for the millage levies and 2020-2021 tentative budget. These items are brought forward to comply with trim, truth in millage legislation. Before I make my recommendations, Mr. Burke will present the millage rates and proposed budget. Mr. Burke. Yes, good evening, school board, Dr. Noy. Uh, you know, this is a, an unusual year and uh, I'd like to first thank the board and your board, the board's budget advisory committee uh, for sticking it out through this uh, virtual environment. We've been able to maintain and adhere to the, the budget calendar we set out in December. Uh, we've had several workshops. This is, you know, not our first meeting on the budget. And your budget advisory committee uh, worked as well. We met with them uh, remotely to, to continue that work. So we, we do have a budget recommendation for you tonight. It's tentative. The budget will no doubt change a little bit between now and September 9th for final adoption. Uh, but I did want to call your attention. Uh, the budget advisory committee, one of the one of the jobs they do for us is they do an annual report each year 
and that's attached to your agenda. And the com committee did fully report, I'm sorry, fully support the budget re recommendation that's in front of you tonight. Uh, this COVID-19 pandemic has really forced us to realign our budget priorities. You know, now uh, the student and staff health safety, you know, shoring up distance learning to improve on that and bolstering our reserves has become critically important. The, uh, you know, we have some good news, right? That in the, the governor did approve the budget that was approved by the legislature back on March 19th. So we're, we're starting at a pretty good place considering the environment we're in. Uh, but I, I remain concerned that the, the state will not be able to sustain this level of funding uh, throughout the year. Um, and we're going to have to continue to monitor this. You know, on August 14th, there will be a very critical general revenue estimating conference. Uh, the results of that conference is really going to drive the future deliberations of our legislature. And it's, you know, we still have some uncertainty, but if the current economic conditions persist, uh, the state's going to run short of money. And uh, I'm concerned that at some point, as early as sometime next school year, that we could feel the impact of that. So that's why it's been critical. You know, we've gone through department budget reductions. We've, we're doing everything we can to save money. Uh, Mr. Canoose is gonna get into the numbers later, but we have been shoring up a reserve basically to deal with the, the additional costs associated with COVID-19, all the PPE, all the things we're doing, the additional professional development time. Uh, and then also to have that reserve ready in case we do experience some state budget cuts down the road. So I feel that's, that's a wise thing to do. Um, our staff is also closely monitoring uh, the work in Washington, D.C. by Congress. There, there's a good prospect now that we may get some additional stimulus money. So we had, you know, the House came out uh, a while back with their HEROES Act. That HEROES Act would have provided $70 billion to K-12 education across the country. Uh, the Senate's recent proposal that they're calling the, the HEALS Act we provide uh, actually $70 billion to K-12 education. So we're in that 60 to 70 billion range for K-12 schools. Just to give you some context, the, the stimulus approved to date through the CARES Act provided 13.5 billion. So this is a substantial increase, you know, four to five times that amount. Uh, but even if that holds true and is approved, it's gonna fall short of what we experienced in the Great Recession with the air funds. That, that reached 100 billion in total for K-12 education. But the thought is more stimulus dollars are gonna be needed to prop up states across the country as their revenues continue to fall short of projections. So we're monitoring that. Uh, I wanna just acknowledge right up front, you know, normally when we come to you each year at this time of the budget, one of our top priorities is establishing a salary reserve for employee bargaining considerations. And this budget in front of you tonight does not have a salary reserve. Uh, what it does have is the categorical funds approved by our governor and legislature to improve classroom teacher pay and to raise that starting salary to 47500 And there is some of those funds can be used to address the veteran teachers and teachers that fall outside of the definition of classroom teacher. So we are we must negotiate a plan with CTA by October 1st, and we'll be working on that in short order and coming back to the board. But I just want to be clear up front that right now, really, those those state dollars are the only dollars that we feel uh, are available for salary increase in this environment. I think the board has to really hang on to all the resources we can to, to be able to ride this storm out. So that, that's kind of where the budget stands in terms of salaries. Uh, there is kind of a new addition. We revised the presentation uh, yesterday. Uh, you may have got an update late, late yesterday or today. Uh, you're going to see... You know, we added the two days for professional development for our teachers last week with the calendar change. Uh, we, you know, that prompted the need. We were looking at our preparations for opening a school year and working with our school principals. And we have some of our other school support staff that now with this three week kind of uh, delay to the school year, we're normally with their contracts, we, we'd have to send them home for a, a couple breaks in between now and the start of school year. And what we like to do is spend about $2 million to bring back some key personnel that are going to be involved with getting schools ready and handing out devices. Uh, this includes the assistant principals, uh, our school technicians, our data processors, our language facilitators that help with interpretations for the parents. And so you're going to see a line item of another 2 million really to help with getting ready for the start of school year. And Ms. Canoose will be going through all that 
in just a minute. Uh, I think I've covered my comments, so I appreciate your attention. I'm going to turn it over now to Ms. Canoose to, to take you through the presentation, uh, what's going on with our proposed tax rates and the, the budget highlights. Thank you. Ms. Canoose. Okay, good evening. So the purpose of the meeting today is really for the board to adopt the tentative millage rates as well as the tentative budget. And so that's why we're starting with the certified school uh, taxable value to give you a historical look back of what the, the property values have been, uh, because that's what the millage rate will be applied to. Uh, so there has been an increase from FY20 to FY21 of 5%. You can see that rate of increase each year is starting to slow down. And we really are not sure at this point what FY22 will look like. Our millage rate for FY20 is 7.01 mills. That is a slight decrease from the prior year. The majority of the millage rate is actually set by the state legislature. And the other components uh, that are allowed to be set by the school board are also capped uh, by state statute. So even though our millage rate has declined, that it's 7.01, it's actually, um, 1.52% greater than the rollback rate. The rollback rate is the rate that would be charged and applied to the current year property tax value to generate the same amount of revenue as the prior year. So since we had a 5% increase um, in the total school taxable value, we would have to decrease that, that uh, millage rate even more to be able to collect the same amount of revenue. So what does that really mean to a homeowner? So looking at a sample homeowner, uh, who has a, a home with a taxable value of $200,000, assuming that there's no increase in the assessed value year over year, will see a decrease in their, their property tax bill of $30.80. Our total budget for FY21 is nearly $3.9 billion. That's an increase of over uh, $300 million. Uh, looking at the increase in the general fund of $97 million, that's primarily due to the increase in the FEFP, which includes the increase for charter schools, family empowerment scholarship, and also McKay. Um, remember for the FEFP purposes, we received an increase as a result um, for the increase in the FRS rates. Um, that also includes the, the teacher salary uh, allocation as well. Um, and looking at the special revenue other, um, I wanted to highlight that's all of our federal, state, and local grants that are not food service related. And the reason why there, it looks like there's a decline in FY21 is we receive a lot of these awards throughout the year. So we will continue to, the, to amend the budget throughout the year. And we expect it to be relatively um, similar to FY20. I also want to note there that the CARES Act money is not included in FY20 or FY21 because we have not received an official award notification from FDOE. It is possible that it's going to be split between both years, but you'll be able to see that reflected in any future budget amendments. Um, and the increase in capital projects, that aligns with the capital plan, the projects in the capital plan. So what's most important to highlight with this budget is that all funds are balanced. Uh, we've been able to establish a reserve of nearly $43 million. We were able to do that based on projected increase in beginning fund balance, uh, which we're still closing out the year. So that is still an estimated um, number that will likely change once we get to final adoption, as well as the savings that we generated from the department reorganizations. Um, it includes that increase in FRS, as well as that new uh, teacher salary allocation program. And then the capital budget includes having one device for every student. So we do know we are going to have additional costs related to COVID-19. And through the cost that we are aware of, at least through today, approximates $22 million. And we are looking as a district as to what funding sources we're eligible to receive that these expenses can be charged to. Um, so we have available to us the reserve that we set aside, as well as the CARES Act and FEMA, and we keep monitoring and looking for other funds that we might be able to utilize uh, and apply for these expenses as we know that we're going to see increase throughout the year. So today the board is being asked uh, to uh, adopt the tentative uh, millage rates as well as the FY21 uh, tentative budget. On August 26th, there will be a workshop for the capital plan. And then on September 9th, we'll have final budget adoption. 
So uh, very nice, uh, Ms. Penoust. That's our, our brief presentation. Uh, you've, as the superintendent said, you've got two action items in front of the board. And at this point, we're, ha we're happy to take any questions the board may have. Mr. Superintendent, I've got a question if I might. Um, Mr. Burke, I'm not sure where, whether this is part of this recommendation or the, or the next one, but um, I, I'm concerned that our, our, our rookie teachers, some of them are getting a 15% pay raise. I'm just concerned about the morale for the older teachers. I, I thought we could put some money towards, you know, other than the state money, to, to try and help that because the morale's got to be terrible among the older teachers. I mean, people out there in the community may think it's going to be easier for our teachers to teach virtually than it is in a classroom. And I, I and I feel exactly the opposite. I think it's much more difficult for our teachers to have to figure out how they're going to teach all these children that are not in front of them physically in their classroom. And, and you know, and to, to, to tell them that, you know, we're not going to at least give them cost of living increase. Um, I'm not sure what the cost of living was this year, but we, we need to do something to help those the veteran teachers that are they're getting basically nothing from the state money. I mean, I, we all discussed before that you know we weren't real happy with the governor's plan to allocate that money only to brand new teachers. You know, all of our teachers deserve to make more. You know, based on their education, they're all professionals, four-year degrees. Um, so, is there no nothing we have in the budget that can be to help that uh, to close up that or to to help that uh, those teachers that are that are actually what do we have eight teachers that have been eight years are going to be making the same as teachers that came on last year. So I mean, what are we doing to try and fix that, or what can we do to fix that? So, Mr. Barbieri, you know we've we've run the numbers. The states provided us the thirty one point seven million dollars, and the way the statute it's it's very prescriptive, but eighty percent of that money has to be used to, to get you to that 47,500 starting salary for classroom teachers. If you have any money left over, you can then use the, the balance to help. Uh, you can couple that with the other 20% to address your veteran teachers and the teachers that fall outside of the, the, defi the state's definition of a classroom teacher. So we've run all the numbers. The good news is we can get to 47,500 for, for the classroom teachers, and actually, you know, for the, the guidance counselors, the media specialists, you know, we always look at the teachers as one big bargaining, bargaining unit. And we've always had one salary schedule. And I feel like that's really beneficial to the district and the employees. So th that would be my recommendation, right? That we, we try to stick to where if, as long as you're a teacher or a guidance counselor, you know, you all start at 47.5. Um, you can get to that point and you still have some money left over for a raise. And we've run the numbers and what the money will do we have about 11 million left over. You can ensure that every teacher gets at least a 1.7% raise. So you're right, that, that new teacher that's going from 41,000 to 47,500, they're gonna get about a 16% raise. Uh, but what we could do is guarantee, and this is all subject to bargaining with the union and, and their acceptance, but we could guarantee basically a 1.7% raise for all of our teachers. That would hopefully offset the cost of living you mentioned I understand that falls short. You know, we've had a track record where the last five years we've we've done a, about a three percent raise for our employees each year, and uh, you know this board was pretty courageous because we approved that last raise on March 18th when the, we had closed our schools on March 13th, so, and we, I don't think any of us knew how bad you know what we were about to go into, but you know the again we're putting all the money available into this reserve to to help deal with the unknown and help deal with COVID 19. And, you know, I heard the board's discussion earlier that we're probably going to have to do more to, to help uh, address this COVID slide and, you know, give the kids some additional instruction. So that that's going to be the choice that you boil down to. But, you know, I we some of us worked through this with the Great Recession. And uh, I always kind of prioritized protecting the district and protecting employees' jobs first before you would consider a raise. And, you know, I think we're at risk. Uh, and I think we really need to monitor this situation and let it play out before we start thinking about increasing our salaries in an environment where we might be forced later to downsize our workforce. Right. I, you know, I, I, I've always said before, Mr. Burke, I mean, I, it's amazing that you're able to keep a budget this huge balance. And I, I appreciate the hard work. I would just like a commitment from the superintendent that with the $43 million we're setting aside for COVID and other issues that might come up with the 
helping the kids uh, catch up that if there's, you know, if we don't use all of that money, I, I want it to go back to our employees because we're take, basically we're taking it away from them this year, putting it into a reserve account. And, and so if we don't use that money for that, I think it needs to go back to those teachers that um, they're only getting the very small raise to make sure that we somehow try to increase this, the, the uh, spread between the new teachers and the veteran teachers. So we eliminate that morale situation, especially when they're all gonna be working their tails off over the next year to try and figure out a way to make sure our kids get the best education possible while they're all home somewhere. So, um, yeah, Mr. Just Mr. Chairman, we'll definitely put that on the list of things to consider, uh, you know, as we get through whatever the state tells us with you. So we, we will keep, we'll put that on the list. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Is there any other discussion from any board members? Mr. Superintendent, did you want to go ahead and make your recommendation then? No, no, you have Ms. McQuinn and Ms. Andrews are both raising their hand, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I can't see see them. Let me see where they're at here. Okay, I've had my hand up. I, I know it's rude to do that because it basically is saying be quiet, Frank, and let me talk, but I knew you didn't see me. Okay, I just am asking a clarification question. Um, our, I'm referring to our referendum monies when um, our most veteran teachers got the highest amount. Talk me through that again. Um, and part of that was in um, to help address this piece between our more newly hired teachers and our veteran teachers. How has that been impacted? Yes, thank you, Mrs. McQuinn, for the question because you make it's uh, you're you're right on the money. the 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 good thing about the referendum and and the board was wise in how that was structured is that it helps combat this compression issue, right? Because it's, it, it recognizes the teacher's tenure and experience. So, that, you know, we had the, the $1,000 referendum supplement for uh, teachers that have one year of experience under their belt. And then that goes after five years up to 5,000 and 10 years, 10,000. So that, that will not change. You know, we still have the benefit of that. Uh, obviously as the starting salaries, you know, the base salaries come up, it, it does impact compression, but at least we do have that those referendum supplements are still something that uh, the experienced teachers will benefit from. Uh, Mrs. Andrews, go ahead. Thank you. And first of all, I'd like to uh, compliment our own uh, Mr. Mike Burke, who is the leader of the finance offices for the Council of Great City Schools. And this is the 75 largest school districts across the nation. So he has led the exercise on financial uh, issues as it relates to this school year with uh, COVID issues and so on. So we are just thrilled to have him at the, at the table here. So just a few things I wanted to say, I'm just happy to have a balanced budget. And I worry, and I think I asked this question last week about the, uh, uh, the district's uh, uh, projected uh, enrollment. I wonder about how many children will be homeschooled or will go to private school or charters. So that's gonna be something that we'll have to look at because I keep hearing from many parents that they, they may not be bringing their children back. But what I worry about too is uh, not having enough money as we go through this uh, COVID experience that we're in right now. And it looks like you said, Mike, we're gonna have enough to cover us for this year. But as I sit in those meetings, I worry because I was happy about the heroes, but it's kind of sitting there dormant right now waiting on the Senate to come up with some money. So if we come up with that money this year, that will make a difference for all of us as it relates to uh, what's happening within our educational system. So when I look at it and I see, uh, you know, the 8.8 .8 million for professional development, that's great. Teachers do need that training. And I love to see the extra duty days for the support people like your ITSAs and those people with technology and other support folks. They really need to have the time and attention uh, given so that they can move the computers and get everything set up for teachers and schools to make it all work for our distance learning. And then when I look at this 5.0 million for the uh, student uh, and staff face coverings, and I wonder, uh, because we don't know how long we're going to be in this mode uh, with COVID-19 and and when we get back to brick and mortar, how much of this will we need? And when I look at this 5.0 million, is that going to be enough for the PPEs, for the ESE and ELL and the teachers and the students. And so if you can come back and tell me how long would that last? Will that last us for the remainder of the year? And so when we talk about our internet, thank goodness we have our um, 
uh, funders, the folks who have been out there helping us out. Many of uh, contributed monies so that we can actually have that internet access, but putting this money aside to make sure everyone will have internet access for 20,000 children. When we remember we had about 16,000 that didn't even have internet access this past year. So when I look at all this, the uh, capital maintenance uh, for the computers and the supplemental budget, is this going to be enough to carry us if we don't get this additional money? I'm appreciative for the CARES Act money, but as I sit in these meetings every day, uh, the, the superintendents as well as the school board members are saying, as well as you've said, Mike, will this be able to carry us if we don't get those additional funds? Mike. So yes, Ms. Andrews, first, you know, thank you for the nice comment. Uh, I, I credit it to endurance and, you know, once you get enough gray hair, you start putting in charge of things, I guess. But, uh, the, the, you know, you're, you've got some great questions there. It's, I guess it's too early to tell. I mean, we are buying what we feel like we need to, to start the school year. And we're buying a pretty large quantity of, of face coverings for both our students and staff. And we have a pretty hefty order now that we're gonna be placing for some of our ESE staff that need extra protective measures. Uh, but I know like we've allocated some additional funds to our schools to buy hand sanitizer and things like that. And I'm fairly certain that we're gonna burn through some of those supplies and have to replenish them. Uh, there was an executive order by the governor. You know, one of the really good things they did was they said they were gonna hold school districts harmless for your enrollment in October. So that, that was one of your current concerns, right? If an enrollment dips, normally we, you know, we'd lose the money immediately. Uh, now we're kind of safe for the first semester of the school year anyway. And uh, so I, I think we're as about as good shape as we can be, but then, you know, not to scare everybody, but if, if you look at what's going on with the state economy, you know, we're losing at least like 20% a, a month of the state revenues that normally come in. And most of that's sales tax. So if sales tax money represents about half our budget and the other half's property tax. And property taxes have been stable and we hope they stay that way. But if, if, uh, if sales tax continue to be down 20%, at some point that's going to reach us. And so then you figure we could lose basically 10%, half of that, half of our operating budget if it's tied to sales tax, we could lose 10% of that. And our operating budget is over $2 billion. So, you know, if you take a 2% hit, you just lost $200 million. And that $42 million reserve is going to look kind of small. And, and that's why this HEROES Act or the HEALS Act is so important. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier that the CARES Act to date was 13 half million and we got our share of that's a little over 30 million. So if, if we can get additional round of stimulus that provides 60 or 70 billion across the country, uh, four to five times greater than the share in Palm Beach County, you know, four to five times 30 million could be 120 to 150 million. Uh, during the Great Recession, we got over 200 million air funds. So yes, those federal dollars, I think, are going to prove to be critically important. And you can see the kind of the magnitude of the potential problem. And if, if we've got our 40 million and uh, the HEALS Act comes in and we've got potentially, you know, another 120 to 150 million, you know, then you're in the ballpark, right? You got a fighting chance to uh, keep things going. And uh, yeah, that would be my hope. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty around all this. You know, it's it's day to day in some cases, and uh, but I do feel like we've put ourselves in the best position possible, and uh, we're we're fortunate. Like our our health insurance fund is doing well. Some of my colleagues around the state and the country, they've got other issues outside of COVID that are throwing them into budget deficits. You know, their health insurance is up twenty percent, what have you. Uh, you know, so knock on wood always, but right now I feel like we're about the best shape we can be. But we've got to be frugal. And we got to like hold on to every dollar we can until things start getting better. Thank and you. I'd like to just add on to that, Mike, uh, for the board and everyone else, that thank goodness for our Council of Great City School for their legislative advocacy. They're on the hill working with the senators as we work through this process of getting this money. They were very instrumental with the CARES money and working with our heroes. But right now, you know, we it's in the Senate now. And so uh, our council is up there uh, with as much work uh, that can be done to uh, begin to uh, continue to work with the, with the uh, senators to see if we can get things moving. And if you can talk to any of the senators, 
uh, that you know, you know, to help them to kind of move it. If we don't get this money, it's going to be an issue for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question is related to uh, the slide that you showed with the additional costs related to COVID. Um, I'm not, I'm, I have one concern, but then also a request. Um, I'm not sure that five days is going to be adequate to meet the needs of the schools. And if there's ever been a time that we need to be effective and efficient to get everything done that needs to be done for the opening of schools, I think this is a time that we need to be in that position to, uh, to deal with that. So I'm a little concerned about that. But related to the conversation that we've had about these extra petition potential costs and whether or not they're adequate, um, either Mr. Burke or, or Dr. Fenoy or Ms. Rico, what is the most efficient way that we could approve this budget and give authority to um, staff to make budget changes as quickly and efficiently as possible, uh, either through budget amendments or whatever is the most efficient way for us to make changes. So if, as Mrs. Andrews said about the uh, face coverings and, and the, those PPE, if we need to deal with that, I want to know that staff can deal with it and not have to wait for an extended period of time uh, for us to meet to make these decisions because when they're needed, they're needed. If we need additional days for people to get school opened or make changes, we need it because we need it to be done then. So can someone um, give me an idea on how, how the board can be efficient on making that decision? Uh, I can take a shot at it. The, uh, you know, school districts are kind of unique in Florida because our fiscal year actually started July 1st. And we have this allowance where the, the board does not approve the budget for, you know, like the first week of September, this year, September 9th. Uh, but we always work hard to make sure the board's kind of informed of any significant decisions related to the budget as we go. And that's why we try to just keep you up to date through these workshops. You know, this is a tentative budget. Uh, so we're asking you to go ahead and, and vote on this tonight. But we, we do have the latitude to make adjustments and bring back, you know, that final budget recommendation September 9th. And you know, if, if we feel like we need to put more money into some of these programs, uh, we could do that. And, uh, you know, I'd probably just still work with the superintendent to kind of keep the board informed along the way. Uh, I, what we don't want to do is get to the final vote and surprise you, right? And have you say, wait a minute, that, that's, that's not what we were thinking. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a, a delicate balance, I guess, but we, we do kind of have, it's kind of unique. We do have some ability, I guess, to adjust the budget and bring you back that final recommendation uh, and, and make some changes as needed between now and then. Okay, thank you. I think that helps. And one other issue, Dr. Fenoy, are there any ways that a lot of the people, we've got hundreds of people who are not working right now, um, they're assigned to home. Are there any things that we can do to reallocate those people to school centers um, during the time of trying to get school open to be of assistance in these schools and, um, and help out the principals and teachers during that time? So Mr. Shaw, a couple of things. Um, on that last question, uh, my direct reports, <clears throat> Mr. Burke and, and the operations team, we talked about that today. So they are at literally working on those particular um, alternative job assignments, and we, but we also have to bring them through the unions as well. Um, and so we, we, we have been doing that and we know that is on our list to make sure that that gets done. So we're further exploring that. I think on the other side, I just wanted to mention, and especially in terms of PPE, and I think the community needs to understand this, we have not, we have not delayed in purchasing this stuff. We have warehouses full of masks and, you know, and, and so we've been, we've been moving forward with these purchases. And Mike is absolutely right. We try to just make sure that we continue to let you know that masks have been purchased, you know, gowns. We just got another request um, based on last week's conversation with our special ed, getting their PPE in. So we're, we're, we're moving, computers have been ordered. And so a lot of the, we realized that Mike really kept pressing on us in really late June, early July in order to say, what things do we need to buy so we can get in line? Uh, because these requests are coming from the entire world at this point. And so I'm very pleased with the status. We, 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 our warehouse is full. Uh, we've even sent out some allocations to the schools to start buying hand sanitizers. 
But we also recognize that a lot of this was tentative. And as we get clear, I think we know we have enough to get started, but you're right. We have to continue to monitor to make sure that we have the money to buy as we keep moving forward. Any other discussion? I'm sorry, I don't know if my mic was on. Did I, uh, did you hear, is there any further discussion by anyone? If not, Mr. Superintendent, you wanna go ahead and make your, your recommendation? Yes, sir. Um, item B1, I recommend the school board adopt the proposed millage levies of 7.0100 mills for fiscal year 2021. The total millage rate is 1.52% greater than the rollback rate and is made up of 3.7550 mills for required local effort, 0 0.0070 mills for prior period RLE adjustment, 0 0.7480 mills for discretionary, discretionary operating, 1.5 mills for local capital improvement, and one mill for additional operating. That is item B1, Mr. Superintendent, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Do we have, do we have a Motion by Dr. Robinson, seconded by Ms. Brill. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. B2, Mr. Superintendent? Yes, item B2. I recommend the school board adopt the tentative district summary budget in the amount of 3,862,185,598 dollars for fiscal year 2021. This includes the district's organizational chart and school board statement of its organization and operation. Mr. Superintendent, I think you said 99 instead of 89. I, st I stand corrected, 89. Great, Do we have a motion. Motion by Mrs. Andrews, seconded by Mrs. Whitfield. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Superintendent, do you have anything else you'd like to uh, discuss? Mr. Chairman, I have nothing else to discuss at this time. All right, board members, unless you have something burning that you want to discuss this evening, we are through with the agenda. And if I need to get a motion to adjourn, motion by Mrs. Whitfield, seconded by Mrs. Andrews. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, Mr. Burke and Dr. Fenoy and Ms. Canoost. Have a nice evening, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.